Do you hate reading patch notes, but Rockta's videos are just too dang comprehensive and informative for your taste? Just want the gist of what's going on without having to sit through six minutes of inexplicable cuts to a three quarters angle? Welcome to update 1.15 and the tide of desolation in a nutshell. Crytek said, me too, boo, and added the katana. So congratulations to every Steam account with an anime PFP. Your day has finally arrived. Similar to the bow, the katana gets its own trait, Martialist, which increases first strike damage as the countdown before it gets the dew claw treatment begins. The Lamat got its muzzle velocity and under barrel accuracy increased, as well as a marksman scoped variant for the carbine version. Speaking of gun variants that look cool but will never be used, the Dolch received two. The Dolch Claw, because people who use the Dolch definitely care about being able to stab mobs with their gun, and the Dolch Deadeye. I know what you're thinking. Dolch Deadeye? For, for the precision? Nope. The Deadeye variant is for the regular Dolch. Yes, you can dual wield it. I don't know why you would outside of roleplaying as IG-11, but you can if you want to. Crytek didn't stop there with the Dolch though, as they've moved forward with Operation Give Every Gun Dum Dum Ammo. On a slightly more terrifying note, the Dolch also gets access to FMJ. Not satisfied with taking over the Lamat Carbine's niche, the drilling chopped itself in half in an attempt to shove every other Quartermaster-friendly weapon to the side, even going so far as to attach the axe used for said chopping to itself after the fact. We did get one variant that almost everyone was excited for, one that has been requested for probably as long as players have been taking upskirt hive screenshots. That's right, the PAX has finally received a long barrel variant, the PAX True Shot, as well as access to hive velocity ammunition, because bigger is in fact better and faster is just efficient. I don't know why she's complaining. Changes to some traits have occurred, including the merging of the Scopesmith traits and a nerf to Lightfoot by way of removing the ability to jump quietly. So now when Gunsmack kills me, I'll at least have heard him coming. Shadow is no longer lonely, living as the sole existing burn trait. Death, Cheat, and Relentless have joined the roster, which just means there are now three burn traits you'll only ever find once before immediately dying. Prestiging is fixed, as you can now buy a Mosin the moment after you- All base weapons are available at Bloodline level 1, and tools and consumables are unlocked via Bloodline level rather than through usage. I'm honestly a really huge fan of this change, I think it's going to help a lot with onboarding new players, and yeah, no notes. No notes! No notes! No notes! No notes, it's perfect. Free hunters are now Crytek's version of financial aid, and are only available if you have less than 20k hunt dollars, and you can recruit more than one at a time if you have less than 5k. Gun oil and blueprints now spawn at workbenches, with blueprints unlocking three random items and gun oil functioning like blueprints used to, providing the next available unlock for your currently equipped weapon. Fusies, flare pistols, and starshell ammo will now ignite down hunters, meaning turning solo headsman players into barbecue is more convenient than ever. Decoy fuses also got a slight buff. They now produce a small explosion that will destroy doors and window shutters. This option is best paired with a soundboard. The effect of the trait Instinct from the Tide of Shadows event has been added to Dark Sight for bounty holders. While carrying a bounty token, the borders of your Dark Sight vision will glow orange if enemy players are within 75 meters, even when you've run out of Dark Sight boost. Generators are gone, they're just gone, as well as their associated mission objectives, find the goddamn generator, and turn off the goddamn generator. Outside of games with developers like Bungie, it's rare to see things completely removed, but in this case, I don't think it was much of a loss. Headsman is about to be even more of a problem with the addition of a new wildcard map condition. Ash Bloom is basically the fog time of day on steroids. It looks sick as fuck and would likely be quite fun if not for the looming fear that I'm about to be jumped by the invisible man. As for the temporary tide of gun variant, I, I mean desolation additions, not a lot has changed from previous events. We have three packs to choose from. The Drowned Pact, an excuse for Crytek to add reskins under the guise of lore, has access to the prior event traits Mariner and Remedy. The Demented Return with the Infernal Pact's old trait Rampage and a new pack trait Berserker, which doubles your melee damage output. The Grounded also returned, but with two new traits. One is called Final Gasp, which restores all missing health chunks when you loot a hunter, and the other is, quite honestly, the weirdest shit I never expected to show up in Hunt. Teleportation. No, I'm not kidding. Shadow Leap allows you to teleport to a nearby mob, including meatheads, by using Dark Sight, and killing it in a way that's giving Mortal Kombat without the questionable casting choices. Fatality. Everything else about the event follows the previous format. Collect event points by interacting with totems, looting dead hunters, killing the bosses, you know the drill. And that's everything in a nutshell. Fucking subscribe!